Welcome back to Alberta Primetime and the nightly Vocal Point. Now joining our Wednesday crime panel, retired criminologist Keith Spencer, Evening. former Edmonton police chief and president of Rayner Consulting, Fred Rayner, and defense lawyer Rod Gregory joining us tonight. Good evening, gentlemen. It's nice to have three of you in, in studio for a change. Jason Van Rassel down in Deer Lodge, Montana, uh, covering the story that we're going to talk about first today, marking the start of Ronald Smith's clemency hearing in Montana. The former Red Deer resident is the only Canadian on death row in the U.S. convicted in the 1982 shooting deaths of two men. Smith has asked a parole board to commute his death sentence to life in prison. The board will make a non-binding recommendation to the governor of Montana, who will uh, make that final decision. Keith, a, a lot of emotions flowing today. First from uh, Ronald Smith's family and, and some of his supporters who spoke. And then in just the past few hours, the, the family of the two victims. How much of an impact, uh, either for or against, does this have on the outcome of, of a parole hearing like this? Uh, will, it, will it really impact the decision yeah. that this governor will have to make? Well, people do listen to these representations and every parole board hearing in the United States or Canada has a has the uh, you know that people have an opportunity to weigh in on these kinds of cases in this particular case I think it's kind of a saw off on both sides I mean there were two victims and there are there those families and then there's the the family of Smith so um, I, I just think that gets to be a, a, a wash in the end what's really interesting to me is that I I uh, don't really believe that, that Smith is the important issue in the Smith case. I think it's a larger issue of people for and against capital punishment. And he's become kind of a, a rallying point around which people can argue this issue from, from both sides. So it's as much about capital punishment in general as it is about Smith in specifics. And so I think that's an added dimension to this case. It's a huge case from that perspective. Uh, Fred, something of a surprise announcement today and that the, uh, the Canadian government uh, to, to make some sort of a, a statement uh, at this hearing. What, if any, role, though, should the Canadian government be playing here? Well, I suppose there are those schools of thought that suggest that uh, the Canadian government should get its own affairs in order re relative to the Canadian judicial system before it goes and lectures other countries on how to run their judicial systems. but. Uh, I think the fact remains you've got a Canadian citizen on death row in Montana and um, I believe it was the courts that basically ordered the federal government to ensure that there was representation. Our courts, our Canadian courts. Our Canadian courts that ordered the, uh, the Canadian government to go down and make sure he was properly represented. Uh, how strenuous their objections are and how strong a plea they're going to make for clemency. Um, I look at that with uh, uh, not a huge strong expectation from this particular federal government. Uh, Rod, does this end up being a, a cut and dry decision as far as the, the governor goes? I think the governor is really taking his decision very seriously and it's uh, whether you're right wing or left wing or whatever your political stripes are, at the end of the day he has to decide whether he's going to order the execution of another human and that's a very very big decision and I don't think it's one that he's taking lightly at all. Uh, let's go around the table. Should Ronald Smith be uh, granted clemency? I think Canadians who commit crimes in other countries should be bound by the laws of those countries and so the clemency issue is, is specifically an American one and I would be I would be quite supportive of however the government wants to decide down there. I don't think Canada should be lecturing um, or telling Americans how to behave. We don't like them telling us how to do things. And uh, so I'm, I would be a very accepting of, of a decision to, for, for the death penalty or f not. Fred? I think uh, Smith's legal counsel has really tried very hard to distance the decision from w what got him in jail in the first place. They said, look, it's not about the murders, it's about the last 30 years and he's a changed man, he's not the same man. And that's probably a, a smart strategy on their behalf. At the end of the day though, the reason he's in jail is because of those murders. And in Montana, where if you commit those crimes, those the death penalty is part of the sanction that you can you can face 
And so if that, if you do those crimes in that environment, it's a democratic uh, community, they're a civilized community, their legal system flows from the Magna Carta much the same as the Canadian one does. Um, I think their governor has a very tough decision to make. If he's got a shot at clemency, it's probably with a Democratic governor, as exists in Montana. But he, that's a governor that already came out and said he's in favor of the death penalty as well. So I think that one could go either way. Last word goes to you. <laughs> well, I think he should be granted clemency, but maybe not for the reason people think. Um, I, I'm against the death penalty in any event because I don't think we should kill other humans and whether you're religious or not if you're religious then I think you should follow your religious beliefs and not endorse killing other people and I think people are hypocritical about that when they have religious beliefs yet they have no problem with someone else executing a criminal having said that the the government has a role and the federal court ordered the government to seek clemency not to not to ensure that Smith comes back to Canada. He's not getting out of jail. And the statistics in the United States say the majority of Americans are against capital punishment. In the Northeast, um, they have the lowest murder rate and they don't have executions. The highest, the places with the highest murder rates have the ex highest execution rates in the US. And that's all borne out by the statistics. So. It's easy to say this person should be executed because it's a straightforward case. But there were 136 people in the US who were exonerated, who were on death row, who might have otherwise have been uh, executed. So it's easy to execute the guilty one, but where do we stop? And I really don't think um, we should make exceptions for the clear cut cases. All righty, up next, the parole hearing for an Alberta Mountie killer. What happened there? We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to the nightly Vocal Point. Our Wednesday crime panel is in. In 1987, Andrew Kay killed RCMP officer Gordon Kowalczyk after being pulled over near Calgary for stealing about $20 worth of gasoline. Kay and his mother, Linda Bowen, were found guilty of murder as well as armed robbery. Uh, Fred, is this a man who should remain forever behind bars? Yeah, I hope that guy rots in jail uh, and never sees the light of day. Uh, when you look at the circumstances for this guy, uh, the R young RCMP member walked up to the window on the side of his truck and without talking to him, saying anything, no problem, he sh just shot him and uh, in cold blood uh, and continues to shoot at this RCMP officer while he's down on the ground. Managed to reload, had to reload his weapon went, tried to turn the lights off on the police cruiser so nobody could see the dastardly dirt that he was doing, and ultimately went back and shot the police officer in the face, killing him. Does he deserve to see the light of day? I don't think so. Uh, that's automatic uh, first degree murder, with no chance of parole for 25 years. Uh, Rod, has he served his penalty? Those 25 years coming up pretty quick. Well, he's if, if you read the transcripts from the parole hearing, he's not going to get out because he's incapable of being released. So the parole board... Um, when you say that, what does that mean? What, well, why is he incapable of being Well, he's incapable released? of being released because he's not eligible to be released into society because um, when you look at the answers that he gave to the parole board, they talk about a complete lack of insight um, they talk about um, the counseling that he needs. There are all kinds of issues that are completely unresolved. And I think at one stage in the, in the transcript, he says, I can't be released. So, so I don't know how the parole board can actually... Why would he apply then? Why, why would he apply for parole then at this juncture? Because he could. Simply and, because he could. And then he can't apply again for another two years. So... There were a lot of issues I think we talked about in relation to his background with his mother that were absolutely bizarre to say the least. And I don't know if those were addressed while he's in prison, but 
if if something doesn't change in his life, he simply will not be released. Do you, do you agree, Keith? He, he will never see the light of day. I, I, I predict that he'll see the light of day because at some point somebody will say he's no harm to society. He's been in here 42 years now. Besides, somebody will coach him on, on how to answer the questions that the board asks and everybody knows what they are and everybody in the jail pays a couple of packs of tobacco to, to get that kind of coaching from other inmates. Uh, he's eligible for parole. That phrase, life in prison, is, is BS. And it was all part of the government, you know, getting away from capital punishment. Nobody does life imprisonment in Canada. Everybody is eligible to be released. And a hearing is automatic at the 25-year point, And it's automatic every two years after because we have a system in which you cannot throw the key away. What this case proves, and, and I was glad to hear Fred being so passionate about this, who you murder is important and who you are is important. Don't murder a police officer. Don't do what the white court boys did and get mixed up with killing police officers because you'll end up doing life imprisonment for, with no parole for 25 years, but you'll come up and you'll be eligible. And and some point they're gonna say it's cheaper to put you out and put you in, a, in an old folks home than it is keeping you in jail. So the worst guys, the guys that we hate the most, Olson and all those guys, they're all going to be eligible and they're all going to be automatically reheard because of this fear of keeping people in jail and throwing the key away. That's a phrase that, that our system is set up to avoid. You cannot throw the key away in Gentlemen, Canada. I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you kindly. Retired criminologist Keith Spencer, former Edmonton uh, police chief and president of Rainer Consulting, Fred Rainer, and defense lawyer Rod Gregory.